When I was first introduced to SAM Labs, I saw the potential of both the, the way they interact with each other, the Bluetooth part of it, as well as the coding piece. So it really opened up, I think, the possibilities for a lot of different, different solutions for a lot of different problems. And at this point, the computer science class that I lead, I make it clear at the beginning that we're learning computer coding and using SAM Lab for four, basically four different reasons. One, to collect data. Two, to build prototypes. Three, to tell stories. And four, to make art. So the I feel like the SAM Lab's tools allow for all of those different possibilities. The last few years I've been teaching kind of a computer science heavy uh, STEAM curriculum to my seventh and eighth grade students. And most of that curriculum has been pretty static. It's you know on a screen, or it's happening out on a, an LED readout, or um, through maybe some breadboard, but nothing that really moves. So when I was at a trade fair, an education summit, at summit trade fair here in Portland, Sam's Labs had their booth out, and I was immediately drawn to the fact that these these locks were moving and, and lighting up, and were very dynamic. And I really wanted to incorporate movement into the STEAM curriculum because I just thought that would boost student engagement. I was pretty intimidated that the students were going to have um, some problems with uh, how to connect it all together, what to do, where to put these things. Uh, freak out, oh my gosh. And I wanted to control that. I wanted to make sure that you know they weren't going to be turned off by all of this or overwhelmed by all of it. But in the end, I just decided to let it go. You know, here's the kits. We're going to day to kind of figure it out. You, um, you get to play around with them. I know you're smart enough. You're capable enough to figure this out. Figure out a phone. You can figure these things out. When you're talking about trial and error, you don't see an error as an end. You see it as a as a moment, a bump, and you push forward and you find a solution, it's almost like you're going to assume there are errors to make sure you have the best solution. And so that fear is sort of erased or set to the side at least. And then that becomes the great pride and defense at the end when you have this product and you say, look, here's this thing, it had this issue, we fixed it, and then it had this issue, we fixed that, and we're really feeling confident about our product. Make connections with other people and really try to build networks of support and collaboration. Reach out to other people, build collaborations with other people, and also be patient 